Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sean Andrew, back with another review. This time we'll be talking about The Secret Circle, Season 1, Episode 10, Darkness. In this case, I'm actually going to split the storylines into two different sections, just to help the whole episode experience flow a little bit better. Um, we're going to talk about the lesser of the two first off, and save the best one for last. Now, we start off with Faye and Melissa back at the secret house. Faye apparently ripped out a page of Cassie's book of shadows and done some research on where she could find the items to do a spell. And Melissa, as normally, is a little bit apprehensive, but Faye shows her a website that she located called Lee LeBlack. Um, it's located near Chance Harbor, so Melissa tags along. Uh, meeting at the location that's on the website, uh, Melissa and Faye encounter some young guy who apparently is running everything out of his parents' garage. At least that's how Faye puts it. He helps them with the spell that will actually expand their powers. Though only Faye seemed to actually have it done. I actually thought it was more of a combined effort because the way Melissa and Faye were talking in the hallway, Melissa seemed interested in some way, shape, or form. Um, now that they're back at the house after having the spell done, uh, Faye decides she's going to try a spell on her own and see if it actually works. After finding out that it doesn't, she goes back to the guy's house, but then she discovers a problem before that. Melissa stands up to her. Now, normally, Melissa doesn't ever seem to have a backbone, um, especially since the guy Nick died. There's been a lot of little complications. Uh, she was really hurt by that whole situation. And she states that she is not going to keep following her, um, Faye around. She's not like some sick puppy. You know, you're going to have to do this part on your own. Faye says whatever, and she leaves. As she gets there, she notices that the guy's place has things like fake blood and store-bought feathers. This sends her into quite a frenzy, especially if you're paying somebody and come to find out they're a complete croc. Um, and she starts breaking his stuff. Just then, the guy comes in and lets her know, you know, I know you're a witch. Uh, especially since he was very curious about the spell that they had shown him so that he could get the materials to do it for them. He made a comment about how this is a very high priest, ancient type of spell, you know, that seemed to almost take him back. Kind of find out his grandparents were also within the wizarding uh, magic world. So that then throws a slight twist into things. And as he says, I know you're a witch, but he also offers to help her with her powers. We now go on to the main storyline. Cassie has a dream, or at least it ends up being more like a nightmare. Uh, Jack shows up in her bedroom, telling her that she can't actually control the magic, as he said. She begins to get a little bit angry, and with one strong push to Jack's chest, he drops to his knees and begins gasping for air. Blood starts pouring from his mouth. Now, due to all the stuff Cassie has just been through, it makes a lot of sense on why she would actually have this, especially for someone who I think is going to definitely be a potential love interest or the whole love triangle between Jack and Adam. Because the following morning, Adam then shows up trying to show his overall concern because of the past few days. And as some of her text messages, has only been one word of responses. They get into a conversation about the dark magic and um, how she could accept that side of it, but also focusing on more and realizing more that, you know, she does have good in her as well. When Jack brings up, um, sorry, when Adam brings up the thought about using Diana's book as a way to help figure out some of the stuff that going, that's going on, Casey starts to feel a little bit um, taken aback, but she doesn't want other people knowing about what's going on, which I find kind of interesting when it's all said and done, as these were the same people who talked you into understanding that you were a witch. And because of this, you know, now you are where you are, and now you just want to kind of leave people high and dry. I mean, I guess that that would be definitely to each its own type of setup. Then they go over to Diana's house where her grandmother shows up, and she ends up confronting her father, Charles, uh, that she and Adam had broken up. To not be too alarmed, just because girls have a tendency of not always telling her father when guys break up with them. But what this does also lead uh, Kate, who's again, Diana's grandmother, 
she ends up learning that Dawn, who's Faye's mother, is now dating Charles. And as she knows all about Henry's death, um, she knows something is going on. So she confronts Dawn and tells her, you know, you never gave my son the light of day when you were kids. And now all of a sudden you're dating. She says she's going to be on her and she's going to find out what uh, she's going to get to the bottom of everything that's happening. Later on, they go to um, Adam as he's looking up dark magic at the house and Diana comes in and she figures out everything super quickly. I don't know why uh, Adam would have left Diana. It just seems totally stupid. But as she starts to figure it out, the few responses that Adam does say when bringing up Cassie's name, um, Cassie happens to walk in a little bit too cliche at that point, but you know, it works. Um, anger strikes her again, just as it did in the dream with Jack. Lo and behold, um, Adam is grabbing his throat. He's gasping for air, but at least in this case, there's no blood. A uh, few bits of further words were exchanged and she did apologize, but everybody then starts to seem a little bit uneasy. Um, later on, Diana then comes in, um, on Cassie doing an attraction spell to actually get Jack to come back at, in town. And upon getting her to stop, she offers her to stay at her place until her grandmother comes back from the healing retreat. Which again, Diana is showing to be a trooper. You know, she understands that her and Adam are broken up. And, you know, she's really trying to move past it. She really wants to be friends with Cassie and really try to work out this magic thing together. You can see her taking the steps of trying to be friends. Later on that afternoon, right before dinner, Don shows up and kisses Charles right in front of his mother. These are one of those deciding points of you really seeing a character for who they truly are. Um, Don is definitely putting her foot down and she will continue to do to make sure that the mother or the grandmother, Kate, knows, you know, she is here and she's not going anywhere, even though technically their relationship isn't really a relationship. But then something interesting happens at the dinner table. Don actually brings a bottle of wine and pours it in Kate's glass. Charles, thinking that because of the conversation they had earlier in the car, that how Don was saying, you need to get rid of your mother. And she was like, well, you know, I can't tell her to leave town. And Don crosses a line, at least in my book, where she says, no, I mean, you need to get rid of her permanently. Now Charles is seeing that Don is willing to take that step. And now with her pouring the wine, Charles decides to step in, takes the wine, and then pours it out. They didn't have a quick little conversation. She lets him know the wine isn't poison. She's just putting her foot down and letting the woman know that, you know, this, she's going to have some competition. That Don is not afraid of, you know, of her, of Kate. And again, this definitely, you can see the same action in Faye with the things that she does, with the people she treated, how she treated Cassie in the very beginning, you know, and you can start to see that whole mother daughter connection, which is, which I think is great for a story when it's all said and done. Later on that night, um, Cassie is, uh, in the bedroom with Diana and then out of the blue, Jake, uh, Adam shows up. Adam then tells Diana, Adam tells, I'm sorry, Cassie, right in front of Diana, that I'm sorry that I betrayed your trust and that it should have overshadowed whatever he had with Diana. And then he leaves. I mean, you knock on your ex's window, who's talking to the girl you may potentially want to go out with, and then you tell your new girl in front of your ex that you should have paid your ex's feelings no mind. And how you should have focused, he should have focused more on hers. Adam, to me, is already starting to come off as a douchebag. But what I will say is that that part felt a bit, from a writing standpoint, unnecessary. It didn't really make or break any of the situations. Like, it just, it just overall just made him come off as being practically a douchebag. Um, either way, later that night, uh, Cassie can't seem to sleep. She goes down to the kitchen and then comes across to Kate. Kate lets her know about how there, um, how there is a way of getting rid of the dark magic, how she can just almost feel the dark magic 
inside of Casey. Um, and Casey jumps at the chance to try to do it. She definitely does not like where this could potentially take her. She definitely didn't like where it took her father. So that morning, Kate decides that uh, she's going to take Cassie to a special part in the woods of Harbor, a special part of Harbor Woods. And then something else happens. It's a little weird. Um, Diana goes into Kate's room just to put in some clean towels and looks like Kate, uh, looks like Diana got a little uh, nosy and started looking through her stuff, kind of find out she finds something that feels to be wrong, which later on we end up finding out to be mandrake root, which is one of the things that can actually help to kill witches. Well, um, at the harbor, at Harbor Woods, you got Cassie and Kate are standing next to this homemade altar, some type of coffin looking thing with a white cloth over it that had a symbol on top. Um, Kate begins to say a spell and then she cuts Cassie's hand and has her put her hand on top of the box to open the box. And then she pulls out this branch called elderberry or also known as death tree. And as Kate holds it in between her hands and snaps the branch, Cassie's body falls lifeless to the floor. She awakes only to realize that she now is in a coffin. Kate states that the earth must bleed the darkness from you as she closes the top and leaves it. Then you got these circle of leaves all of a sudden start rushing towards the box, almost um, burying her alive. They then cut to uh, Kate coming back at the house and Charles confronts his mother talking about, you know, I know something is up. And the mother just comes clean right then and there. Yes, um, I tried to kill Cassie. Um, I don't really think that it worked. Uh, she definitely is the one that we've been looking for. Um, she also then lets her know about the issue referring back to Henry. And that she knows you had something to do with it. Uh, he tries to play coy for just a moment until she says, look, you know, every witch seems to have like their own scent to a particular scene and that real witches, the more elders, they know it. And the mother definitely knows her sons. So back out at Harbor Woods, Adam and Diana show up, but not before Cassie has a, a moment to home in on her powers. She realizes, you know, she starts to panic. She is practically being buried alive. She is completely scared and she focuses her breathing. And she says, let me out. The lid blows off the top and it showed it had almost been a good two inches or so of dirt had completely covered the box. And Diana and Adam show up, they help her out, and then they go back to Diana's room. She apologized for everything that had happened. Diana, of course, would feel really bad as she made um, Cassie know that, hey, you can trust her. You can trust my grandmother, which I don't see why Diana would have thought anything differently. And though where Cassie did make a comment of how um, her grandmother didn't suspect anything about uh, Diana at the time, magic wise, that kind of put a little bit at ease, but something weird happened when Cassie started to describe the feeling of fear running through her body and how, when it all erupted, that she actually liked it. You can start to see maybe that little bit of dark magic is starting to tinker with her a little bit more than she would probably like it would. But I do like how they ended the episode. Um, Diana acts. So, how powerful are you? They kind of fade out from the window. Uh, they look downwards and you, you see Jake standing there in a hoodie. Overall, I love where they're going with the series. They're definitely giving it time to kind of build. They don't throw too many twists and turns so they can truly flush out an actual episode. I think that each one of the characters are getting their, um, their, their just due when it comes to learning about them. And a few of the extra characters, like for this particular episode dealing with Kate's grandmother, she was a nice twist to the bunch without really complicating the whole situation. Uh, I can't wait to see next week's episode. Again, so this is The Secret Circle um, episode 11 uh, called Darkness. CW is really stepping it up. I, I have to admit, I'm enjoying where they're going with these stories. So, my name is Sean Andrew with the TV Show Review. See ya.